How you doing? Today we're going to be tying some wet flies, lock style wet flies. This particular pattern is a variation of a famous old lock style pattern, Peter Ross. So this is a Peter Ross dabbler variant that I've been tying over the last number of seasons and um, hearing about a lot of success in it and I've had a lot of success in it over the years myself. Um, even sea trout fishing in size 12s maybe. Um, this fly can, can, can get you a fish. Um, to begin, in the vise I have a Type W 10SL barbless Duhaku hook. Good strong hook. And I'm going to start off by, as usual, attaching my thread to the hook. This is a strong Kevlar thread I use. You can get it on my website if you want to get some. So, for the tail, I'm going to use some dyed red golden pheasant tippets. Take off a few of those there. Make sure I keep the bars exactly the way I want them. Bring the thread down a little bit further down the hook. Secure them in well and tie it in. Take away your waist. Now, when you're taking away this waist, because I'm going to have a, a, a mylar silver body that's going to cover the bottom half of the hook, don't cut your waist back here. Bring it off up the hook to make sure we have a nice flat underbody for the mylar, otherwise, you could run into. Small issues if you have a little bump there when you're winding up your mylar body. Next thing I'm going to do is a piece of flat wire. Again, make sure it goes the full length of the body so we don't have any discrepancies there under the mylar. Attach that in. Then I'm going to take some 364 joule mylar. For the body. So, as most of you know, tie if you want a silver side out at the final production, will then you tie in the gold side out. And back up the body with the trade, making sure everyone's nice and flat and secured. Begin to wind your mylar up your body and overlap it turns. Just mind that hook there. When you do a mylar, just take your time. Get it right. Nice flat, even body, overlapping turns. And if it slips like that, just go back one turn. We don't need to go the whole way up. So we've got tension on the mylar, a couple of turns of thread over the top. Let go of the mylar, put the tension on the thread. Keeps everything nice and secure. Let's take away that waste. There. Again, a few extra turns just to tidy up and make sure everything's well secure and up there near the head of the fly. As you can see, I stopped the body quite well short of the head, and you'll see that reason you know, in a few moments when I go to complete the body. So, wire rib for strength, opposite direction. Again, nice even turns, take your time. Up to there. Again, tension on the wire. Couple of turns over the top and then switch the tension onto the thread. Keeps everything nice and secure and stops it from slipping. Little round twist of the wire, breaks it away cleanly. Couple of more turns. That's what I like about this Kevlar thread I have is that a um, couple of turns there, here and there, extra turns, doesn't over bulk up the fly. Okay, so there's the first part of our body in. Now, just to finish off the body, we are going to tie in 
a dubbing brush. So we're going to make a dubbing brush, and this dubbing is called Red Gleamy Dubbing. Okay, it's by Hins Products. Um, also, if you don't have that stuff, if you have a little bit of metallic dubbing or red seals for, um, can work quite well. Uh, as a substitute but I normally use the gleamy it's kind of like a it's an SLF um, it's like a shiny version of seals for basically is the best way to describe it so that's it there so start by splitting your thread and make your double brush flatten out the double Hold your thread and begin to just get the thread to tighten up. Spin in the thread bobbin. Just to form that dubbing brush. And you're there, another couple of spins. Gets the dubbing nice and secure. Again, as I mentioned in the previous video, if I was to dub that on normally, and then try and brush it out, you, you can run the danger of just being too bulky up near the head where if you form a dubbing brush, it has a nice thin core and you still get a great effect of a long, almost like a dubbing hackle basically. That uh, allows you to keep that head nice and slim because when we go to fit our cloak on and our wing, we don't want a massive big bulk of dubbing up there near the head. So just a couple of more turns there now. I'm looking good, pluck out any of the kind of loose ones, get some get it all nicely shaped and there's our dubbing brush come back onto the silver body and begin to wind and just brush them back as you want, as require up there to the head of the fly pluck out any Loose bits that might be there, get as thin as you like. Again, go into our trusty Dublin brush. Brush it out. I get a lovely red. Subtle cloak over that fly. And just give it a squeeze up there now to make an extra little bit of room for what's to come next. So, next thing we want to do is put a little uh, bronze mallard cloak. On that fly, not too heavy. We don't want to overpower that work we've just completed. So select a little bit of bronze mallard. Cut out your section. Everyone has their their own way of doing their their dabblers and cloaking and wings and stuff like that. And this is my my preferred finish to a dabbler fly. So I cut out a little section of bronze mallard. Hold it into where I want tips as far back as I want tips to go. Hold it in, loosely go around the fly, and then once you make the loop, just tighten up. And that gives me the cloak exactly where I want. Just before I finish it up, I can manipulate it around a bit to where I want it to go. Don't want to overcloak it. I don't want to take away from the body of the fly, but yeah, I want just a little bit of bronze matter there showing up. So I'm just going to take away some of that waste down for a minute and I'm going to tidy it up there now. So excuse me. Push it all back there and get it tidied up. Now. So now just to add a finish to that fly, we're going to put a little wing on top. In order to do this, I'm going to take another piece of bronze mallard. Another section, and I'm going to fold it. Just roll it between the fingers to form a wing. And we're going to just place that 
directly up there on top. Using my Kevlar just to get everything nice and tidy up there near the head of that fly. In a little bit there, just me tidying up. Now, last piece to go into that is a pair of jungle cock cheeks. So again, searching through the jungle cock capes, getting my ideal size eyes. Go. Cleaning down the jungle cock eye by stripping back to that one. I'm going to just tie them in there on the side. Couple of turns, secures them in there nicely. Tidy up and take away the waste. Now for my head, black sharpie on the thread. Put a little bit of black there just up around the head, it saves making sure we get it all nice black finish on this head couple of turns make sure we're well covered finish take a whip finish couple of turns and a good squeeze last in but not least a little bit of varnish just to tidy up that head Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the tie-in, and don't forget to check out our website for all you need for flight. See you soon.